Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be nothing to do with Hondas for once. Um, this is going back to the Skyline. Now, the last video I put of the Skyline, uh, it was very obvious that I put the bigger, bigger turbo on that, and I just looked disappointed. Now, what I didn't do, what I haven't uploaded since, was three days later, I literally took the engine out of the car. Sent the car off to get painted, all under the bonnet painted, the arches smoothed in. left with the engine. Now, if anyone who owns a Skyline or is interested in Skylines, the parts aren't the cheapest. Like, it's not like building your average car. Even so much as window sales are a fucking stupid amount of money. So, basically while the Skyline's been in getting painted and all the rest, it's still there now. Um, I've been working on customers' cars and gathering up the money and the parts um, to build it. Now, mine's an R32 GDST, it's not a GDR. Um, and meaning, one, it's rear wheel drive, and two, it doesn't have the RB26, it has the RB20. Now, lots of people are going to be like, oh, I shove an RB25 in, I shove an RB26 in. It's realistically, it makes absolutely no difference which R RB you've got in. If you go for the 26, you're going to be spending way more money. If you go for the 25, again, you're going to be spending way more money. The RB20, people say, oh, you can't get the power out of them, all the rest. Well, you can, you just again have to spend a lot of money um, so I might as well if I'm going to spend money on them all I might as well just keep the one that's in it uh, so basically what I've been doing is building the RB20 now people again have this misconception about the Skylines that they can take a lot of power that the gearboxes are good and all the rest when realistically they shit there's no way of putting it they are shit they are a 30 year old car um, parts are silly expensive and they're not a very good car. The as much as the amazing car to drive and everything like that, but as part as far as what the engines can handle, what the gearbox can handle, the nothing in comparison to say the the EP3s with the K20. And that might be really controversial saying that, but the K20 is a far better engine in every way, shape, or form. Um, apart from the sound, the RBs sound phenomenal in comparison to the K20. However, saying that, the RB is definitely a better looking engine it's just one of them things that for me personally it's always been my dream to either own a Skyline or a Supra uh, from growing up and everything like that and from going to car meets all the rest I've always wanted a Skyline and a Supra now everyone thinks it's be like oh you want the R34 I've never ever wanted the R34 I've always wanted the R32 because it was the original Godzilla uh, the original GTR basically in my eyes um, so I've kind of got my dream car and I'll sort of go through what I'm doing with it and how I want the car to look. Now, it's something like 4am at the minute. So, one, I'm nagged. Two, it's fucking freezing. But I'm going to talk you through the engine, what what I'm doing, what the plan is with the car, and what I've done gearbox-wise, etc. <laughs> The engine's looking way different to what I did before. It's now top mounted turbo. It is, however, using a little Chinese manifold. Um, you can upgrade to six boost, make me own, etc. etc. That is probably going to happen in the future, probably the near future, but for now, even if, even if it's just for mocking up purposes, I've just got that. It was something like 68 quid. Now, unfortunately, fucking somehow, that was by far the cheapest part of the build. There is nothing else that has been cheap. Um, we've gone for a front facing plenum, which I've gone with, a, I think it's all Katu Garage. 
without saying too much again, it's it's realistically a Chinese manifold, but it's a Chinese manifold that's then been branded, been reused, and it's not bad quality. Like I've used them type of manifolds on the EP3s before, and they're brilliant, and it serves the purpose I wanted. I wanted a, a good looking front facing inlet, and I got it. Now, it wasn't cheap. Luckily for me, the previous owner of the car bought it and it was just in the boot of the car. Now, if I was to buy that myself, it was something like the, like something like 900 quid with the throttle body. Now, I would never pay that for an inlet. I'd have went straight onto me supplier in China and went, do us a favor, mate, knock us up one of these. Easy. Um, but yeah, so we're using a GT3076. Well, now people normally use GT3071, I think it is. But I deal with these turbos all the time. It might be a bit laggy. To be honest, I don't really care. I just wanted more the look of it. And it can't be too bad, can it? It's not going to be that bad. If the K20 can spoil it, I'm sure a six cylinder can spoil it. Um, but yeah. So let's talk about the turbo. Uh, it's a Pulsar GT30 76. Um, it's billet wheel with dual ball bearing. Um, it should spool up faster than any of the other turbos that we've tried on it, so better than the max speed rods. Um, the only thing I could have done better was I could have went for a GT3071, which is apparently perfect for the RB. However, I don't know, I just thought the K20 pretty much spills this mint, so I'm pretty sure a six cylinder can spool it decently. Um, this should happily achieve up to 600 horsepower will the engine do it possibly i don't know it's going to be it's my first rb i've ever built as you can see it's fully tidy rb then i'll go and ruin it by resting on the tire but i'll be honest i put on the engine lift and it didn't seem the most stable thing in the world so this for now as you know these are quite an expensive engine this for now feels the safest in the garage but yeah that's me uh me reason for the choice of that turbo is one i stock them and two well i've tried and tested them before so i know they're decent right so we'll move on to coil packs now coil packs of using this are actually audi ra coil packs uh the rb coil packs are pretty shit even if you upgrade to the spitfire ones they're still pretty crap so one of the best things you can do is upgrade to the Audi, the, either the Audi R8, the Toyota Yaris, or the R35 coil packs. I went for the Audi R8 one because the little plates were cheap enough to, to get hold of. I'm not saying not that they were cheap. That bit of fucking plastic there was like 120 quid, but they're more accessible. And there's plenty of wiring looms for them. So I've got the wiring loom that goes with it, adapts it, and hopefully should be perfect for this engine. Now let's get on to the big plenum now, like I say, this is in a Oteku, sorry, garage um, inlet. It's actually just a Chinese inlet that, they, like I say, it's absolutely beautifully made, everything like that. But uh, obviously different companies put the name on and then resell it, like most car parts places do. But it changes all how the coolant, the coolant ways look and everything like that. It's very neat and tidy, it comes with an 80mm, I don't know if you can see, an 80mm throttle body. Um, which, to be fair, I'd probably put upside down. But it comes with 80mm throttle body. And... It's not this what it is. It's, uh, it looks tidy enough. Apparently you lose a bit of torque, low down torque, with the runners being so short. But... Uh, I'm not bothered. So... Sort of like, I'm not building it for a drift car or anything like that. I'm building it for a car to, to drive to car meets, to, to look pretty and everything like that. I mean, I can't really afford to be driving one of these around and blowing them up every other day. The engines aren't uh, exactly the cheapest things in the world. But yeah, like I say, the previous one, that. it does come with a fuel rail and everything. I haven't got that on because I'm sort of in the middle of trying to figure out how the injectors go on these. Uh, they're supposed to use 14mm top feeds, but... They don't seem to fit in as nice as I thought they would. So I'm just waiting for a different set of injectors coming. 
to trial fit them and then we'll go from there. Now, if you're wondering what these two random bolts are, it's just where I've been using to hoist the engine. Um, they don't actually come with a place for an engine, so like an engine to hook, uh, engine crane to hook onto. So I've just been sticking bolts in and putting the chains around them, but you can buy something from somewhere that fits in there and apparently works mint. Oh yeah, that's the that's the intake. So quite often, these um, manifolds get a bit of rep online for these fittings here snapping off or being of poor quality. Now, I can see why that is, but I think a lot of the issues are probably user error because, as you can see, I've got a big gasket seal and I'll, I'll wipe that off, but you put a big gasket seal on them screw them in by hand and only give them a nip up, you don't have to, they are, uh, they are tapered fitting, so if you're screwing them in, you're going to snap and you're going to fuck the threads because you're supposed to do it very, it's not supposed to be flush, it's supposed to just be so it nips up, and if you do it like that, then you shouldn't have any issues, so I personally don't think there's anything actually wrong with them fittings, stuff like the Skunk 2 Ultra and things like that come with them fittings on their manifolds and nobody tends to have issues. So I think a lot of that is just user error that I see online. The throttle body, again, that seems of good quality. I don't think it's going to stick. Spring feels pretty solid and it seems like it's a pretty decent spring. Um, I'm not sure about calibrating the TPS yet. That might be interesting, but I'll soon see at that. Um, but yeah, it doesn't... It seems all right. Can't, I haven't had any issues with the fit, and the only thing I don't get is I don't get how the it's going to. This is going to clear the the coolant hose, but I'll uh, cross that bridge when I come to it. Um, yeah, that just seems a bit bit of a strange one, but nevertheless, I do actually highly rate this manifold. I think it definitely makes the the engine look like a look like a could look an engine. So it's definitely better than that shitty over the top uh original inlet. Another little thing that I've got is a oil filter relocation kit. Now the reason I've got this is it's actually quite notoriously hard to get to the oil filter on the RB engines when it's in the skyline. So this is, I believe, is actually a genuine Greddy one, original one. Um, made in USA and everything. It's it's second-hand part. It's not brand new, but it's supposed to be good. And I'm sure I'll be able to clean it up a bit more than that. I just, well, to be honest, I just didn't haven't cleaned this yet, I'm going to take that off, put a new filter on it, and I'll clean all that up, put a blank in there, and put the other sensor in there, um, and that should make it easier, now I'm going to low mount this, this will go either go on the chassis rail below, so I can get to it, or it might even sit up into the inner wing, um, I'm not sure yet, it just depends what's going to look good, because I want the engine bay to look as clean as possible, but we'll see. So one of the big things that people say is, why haven't you gone for electric fan? I'm keeping the original discus fan because it is just simply better than the electric fans. There's nothing else I can say about it. It's just better. It, flow, it, it has a better airflow. It's just... It is what it is. It's just better. I mean, it's a shame I can't clean it up much more. Like, that is cleaned up as best as I can. Um, none of that seems to come off. It's all sort of burnt in, but... You're not going to really see it once it's in the car. You'll hear it, but you won't really see it. Um, another thing is I've kept the original cast. Now, this is a, a bit of a weird one. I don't want to keep this, but I'm using a Haltec Platinum Pro, and I don't actually know what trigger kits work with it, so if there's anyone who's more knowledgeable than myself about this, which there will be plenty of them, because it's my first uh, Skyline and RB engine, um, if they know a trigger kit that works perfectly with the ha uh, Haltec Platinum Pro, then... Give us a shout and show us what it is. Now I know the trigger kits are, all, are also expensive. They like some of them like range between like five hundred and six hundred quid. So 
it is just going one, one of them things where I bite the bullet and and get it. Um, but for now, that's that's going to be more than up for the job of just getting the getting the car running and just seeing what's like running the engine in a bit. And fingers crossed, doesn't cause us any problem. Um, if we come round at the back, right. So, if you look at the back of the engine, you'll notice that there's an adapter plate on it. Right, and you'll also, for the Eagle Eye, you'll notice that there's no half moons in here. It's because I'm waiting on the, the gasket and the billet half moon's coming for this. Um, I've also got, this will be tapped out, and I've got a head drain that goes in now. The RBs sort of suffer from, um, like, in a bit of a weird oiling issue where the oil... Where it fills the head up, basically. I don't know how else to describe it. It sort of fills the head up and then starves the bottom end or something along the lines of that. So you've got to put a drain that goes from here to the sump. Um, there's many ways of doing it, either from straight from there, um, down some put it into the turbo drain. It's whatever you, however you feel like it. Now, you notice this part's a little bit dirtier than the rest. It's just because I haven't cleaned it up yet. I've got to brush it all down, take all this gunk, all this old silicon off, put the half moons in, it was just basically, I forgot about it, um, but yeah, anyway, let's get back on the adapter, now the adapter is a PMC adapter, and it's for a BMW E46 420G gearbox, which is this gearbox here, um, BMW. Now, what that is, the original gay box, is dog shit. Total dog shit. It can probably take about 350 horsepower, I don't know what torque, before it absolutely shits its pants. And considering I've got one already in the car and a spare, means that clearly the previous owner thought it was shit and all. So, that's why I'm running that. Now, that box there should be good for roughly a thousand horsepower. Not that I'll ever get that out of the RB20, but at least it'll be pretty reliable, I should say. Um, the adapter plate also comes with an adapter flywheel. So everything is sort of straight all up. Now, talking about a little bit of specs about the engine. This is where it gets weird. So, it's a completely stock head. I haven't put cams in it and nothing like that. Um, that might be a future thing. It might not. I'm not sure yet. I want to sell the car drives and everything like that. It's got a Tomei head gasket, 1.5mm ARP head studs. Um, Supertech pistons and uh, spool rods. That's it. And obviously new bearings and shit like that, but... Now, over the top, it's just a forged bottom end. And I'm not going to be running silly figures out of it. I'm hopefully going to be running 450 to 500 horsepower safely, just so the car... I don't... The only way I can describe it is I just want the car to be nice and tidy and neat and just look like a poster car. I'll be driving it all the time, but I would like the car to look as nice as possible. So the rocker covers uh, also match to the colour of the car. That is the new colour of the car. Now, if you've seen it before, it was a narrow grey. It's now gone celestial blue. It's not Bayside blue, as people keep on thinking it is. It's actually Mazda celestial blue. And the reason that I've gone for that is, one, Bayside blue is very expensive. It's a three-layer three, to three, um, three layer paint, so it's also really hard to paint. Where Celestial Blue comes out, it's that is like a two-tone paint, but it's half the price and a lot easier for the, the painter to paint and not the fuck up, basically. And if it ever gets into a bump, it's easy to replicate. So that's what that is. As you can see, it's still a very nice colour. Um, yeah, it's... It's what it is. I'm not going to pretend that this build's been hard because it really hasn't. It took... For the first time ever working on an RB, it took roughly just three hours to take the engine out. 
majority of that was just deciphering the wires and what goes where. Um, actually, turning the engine out itself was a piece of piss. Um, also, actually, it was quite difficult trying to figure out how to get on the engine lift because these engines are quite heavy. They're not like a K20. They, I think they almost double the weight. Um, so trying to figure out something that would hold it properly um, and make me feel confident turning out was a bit of a dick. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's out. Um, well, it's ready to go back in, really. We're just waiting on a R33 automatic um, flex plate, which will go along with the flywheel adapter. And that obviously allows the starter motor to fucking to start to start the end uh, to spin on the ring gear once you start the engine. Uh, of course, I'll put some pictures on now. I put on the other day when I was test fitting fit the box. I thought, fucking hell, oh, there's something missing here, and obviously that's what it was. The clutch I'll be able to use is actually a three. I think it's a three thirty BMW. Uh, 330D BMW clutch and apparently that'll take as much torque as I need um, and obviously it's it's just an OEM clutch so it shouldn't have a shit field for it either so I'm looking forward to that because uh, I'm normally running competition stage 4 and everything so it'd be nice to actually have a car that's got just a bit normal clutch feel um, and still be able to cope with the torque and horsepower easily so yeah it should be it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weird build for us but different um but I have to admit, like, I, I can't buzz with it. I keep on posting pictures of it because, like, I just think however I wanted the engine to look in my life is sort of, that's it. That's that's sort of my dream build. Um, it's not priority over anyone else's build at all. It's, in fact, it's probably had less time spent on than anyone else's build. But it's something that when I'm working every single day and building other people's cars, you sort of get a bit if you've got no goal for yourself it starts to get a bit draining and a bit down but since doing this I've been staying back an extra an extra hour say every night and just sort of cleaning it up getting things done wire wheeling each each bolt each individual mount it's been a it's been a painful process but the results obviously I have to admit that I, I think it looks fantastic um, and obviously we'll, we'll show you putting it back in the car I'll put some pictures up of, of taking it out. Um, and hopefully people are going to enjoy the build as much as I'm enjoying it. Uh, my wallet's not, but it's just the same with every build, I suppose. Apart from fucking Skyline Tax, it's just bizarre. Fucking mental, actually. Uh, but it is what it is. My choice of car, I suppose. But yeah, um, another thing is, it is sort of a an in-between build so I'm not trying to break the bank but at the same time I'm trying to do decent quality stuff I know I've said about the cheap manifold uh, about the cheap exhaust manifold now as far as I'm aware all the manifolds crack doesn't matter if it's cheap expensive or anything the only one that's not supposed to crack is a six boost one um, again it's mega money something that I can probably have made up in the future rather than go for an off-the-shelf manifold um, but we're keeping the we're keeping the main things proper, which will be like it'll run a turbo smart wastegate. It's running Bosch uh, 550cc injectors. I could go for the thousand cc's, but it's probably going to be overkill to be honest for what I want out of it. Um, so we're going for the 550s. It just again, it's another like a couple of hundred quid saving. Um, that's not going to really make any difference to the build. Um, what else? Uh, it's got a Walbro fuel pump in it, so it's got it's got basically all the things that it needs to run safely. Um, obviously, the Pulsar Turbo is Pulsar, but it's it's Chinese, but it's good Chinese. Um, yeah, it's, it it is what it is. Then I've got the expensive things like the gearbox and the adapter plate, um, the ECU, um, pretty much anything else that goes on that engine is not cheap. And I don't believe that it's the price equals quality because it really doesn't like like I say that manifold's well over the inlet manifold's well overpriced for what it is. You could probably pick it up off uh, I think it's Alibaba for like two hundred and fifty quid. Where the previous one's probably paid like I think it's nine hundred quid the are. And you're gonna get the same quality item just once. Not gonna have a name on it, one is. Um 
a lot of people go say go for these fake ready things these freddy inlets and stuff I, I, honestly i don't care if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't you just you you do what works whether it's expensive or not working's working as far as i'm concerned um but yeah hopefully it shouldn't be too long um i'll show i'll put some pictures of how the car's looking and um, since it's been in the body shop i'm on trying to sort the engine bit out it's a bit of a chew on because the wiring loom has been butchered previously um i'm not knocking the previous one or anything like that. he's obviously put gauges and shit and like that but it's a bit difficult for me to then start cutting all this loom tape off and figuring out what's what but i'll get it'll get done and i'll persevere with it and it will be a clean build under the bonnet everything's getting painted um all smoothed out so yeah i'm not i can't do body work i'm total shit at it well i've never tried it but i'm guessing i'm probably total shit at it because i just don't want to touch it um but we've got a nice uh lad who does all, all of our body works uh, if you go on our website it's on under bobby's body shop um he'll do he does car spray and repairs everything like that um he, he can cater for what you need so if you want the cheapest a cheap job he'll do a cheap job if you want a, a top quality job um obviously you get charged for for what you want but if you if you just want stuff tidying up and that he can do that as well um you just have to give us a shout it all comes to us um the bloke's a retired bloke um and he's more than he's more than happy to help us out where needs be uh but yeah this is sort of just an update on the skyline board and hopefully that you enjoyed and like and subscribe to see more of it.